Alexis Sunshine 83, it's always sunny here. Hey Sunshiners, Lux of Sunshine 83 right here. Hello, hello, super sunny day, what is up? As you guys can see from the title, today's video is a little bit different and I do still kind of feel a little bit iffy about doing this video. There's gonna be a lot of disclaimers in this video just because basically my goal of my channel is to hopefully inspire you guys to shop secondhand and to show you all the rad stuff you can find at the thrift store. Even though I've been on kind of my secondhand ethical fashion type journey for a while now, I did make a video last December promising you guys that I wouldn't be doing any more fast fashion hauls. I definitely very rarely buy stuff new. If I do, a lot of times it is shoes. Basically to give an introduction to this video, I'm going to be talking about specifically Nasty Gal's vintage line and kind of a little bit more in depth on Nasty Gal and also fast fashion as a whole and kind of this new idea of sustainable fast fashion and what that means. And I feel like we are going to be seeing that a lot as we continue on in the future. I technically will be showing you guys some items that I did purchase from the Nasty Gal vintage line and that doesn't specifically say that I support that whatsoever. I just kind of wanted to take a look for myself. Basically, this video is going to be kind of divided up in two different sections. The first part is me just going to be talking about what is sustainable fast fashion, how did we get here, what kind of happened in Nasty Gal, why don't they sell vintage items anymore, why they've developed this new line. And then the second part is going to be the haul. So I will leave like the timestamp for that down below if you guys just want to know about the items. I just wanted to throw that in there to give a little table of contents to this video. Before we start getting into kind of Nasty Gal, I want to talk to you guys about probably the most recent change in fast fashion, which is Forever 21 going bankrupt. Now, personally, I haven't shopped at Forever 21 in such a long time. And obviously it sounds like a lot of people also have it. There are a lot of different reasons why Forever 21 is going bankrupt, but one website did bring up kind of the criticism that fast fashion has faced recently, specifically with its toll on the environment. Apparel and footwear production accounts for 8% of global greenhouse gas emissions. According to a 2018 report, consumers throw away shoes and clothing on average of 70 pounds per person annually. And although there are textile recycling programs, about 85% of waste goes into landfills. And although there are ways to donate unwanted clothing, a lot of these items are made so poorly that they end up falling apart and not being able to even be resold at thrift stores and then just end up again into the landfill. And although you may love the item when you buy it, on average, most consumers will discard it after only five weeks. And mass fashion kind of encourages that. Obviously, they want you to be buying something new. I mean, every single day. There's no denying that the price is just too attractive not to go for. But in most cases, that price is just too good to be true. And there is somebody in that supply chain that will be paying for it. And I feel like the biggest argument for it is, is it the company's responsibility or is it the consumer's responsibility? And although the idea that every dollar is a vote, sometimes consumers can't specifically afford a $150 shirt from Reformation, which technically isn't the most sustainable company anyway. And it just gets into a very like black hole of like sustainability, what's ethical. In my opinion, secondhand fashion is the most sustainable way to purchase because it's keeping those items out of landfills, but not everyone has thrift stores or good thrift stores, or you don't have Poshmark, you don't have ThreadUp. Depop can be a little sketchy sometimes. I feel like anything that you do does count as small as it is or as big as it is. And I feel like that's a great segue into what this video is, which is specifically about Nasty Gal. Now, I don't think I said this yet, but this video is not sponsored by Nasty Gal or Boohoo, which Boohoo owns Nasty Gal. And kind of a perfect way to show that is I hate Boohoo and Nasty Gal. I feel like they have pretty horrible quality items, which is why I was so intrigued by this. I had seen someone on Instagram kind of promote it and I was like, oh wait, what? Vintage denim on a fast fashion website? Is this company doing vintage because they see how horrible their environmental impact is and they do want to make a change? Or are they seeing the competition of secondhand fashion and realizing that consumers care about that and they're trying to greenwash their customers to say that they are sustainable when they aren't necessarily. And on these vintage items, Nasty Gal says, it is their latest arsenal of vintage essentials inspired by our love of history's treasures and sourced from sustainable fabric, meaning you can save the environment and look good at the same time. Which is great for somebody that, again, may not have thrift stores and they're like, oh, this is being sourced sustainably and I can help the environment, I'm so happy. But then there's also the other side of like, is it? So I did a little deep dive into Nasty Gal because I know when I was younger and Nasty Gal was 
very big. I always wanted to purchase from them, but obviously their prices were quite expensive, but they did begin as a vintage store. The idea of fast fashion really appealed to most consumers around the world, and there wasn't a lot of value on vintage fashion for the regular consumer. So in 2016, they ended up going bankrupt, and I think around 2017, the company Boohoo ended up buying from them, which I didn't realize until I started researching this because I always looked at the websites and I was like, why do they look so similar? Boohoo literally is 50% off every single day. And so is Nasty Gal, which is such a annoying marketing strategy. Just put the prices like that because you're always on sale anyway. Like you're just trying to make customers think they're getting a better deal than they actually are, but that's besides the point. And their vintage line came out back in February, actually of this year. And they explained that our design team and supply source scour through an array of secondhand product to bring us the very best and trend led vintage fashion that can be transformed and repurposed into new pieces. Their collection focuses on recycling and reinventing the fashion to bring each piece to life and make it more modern with prices ranging from $30 to $100. In an article about Nasty Gal's kind of past, when it comes to selling vintage items. They said you can't mass produce Chanel bags, vintage Louis Vuitton or YSL. So it was a very small niche customer that was shopping that collection because the price point was really high. So their price point is a lot more attainable to the average girl, but you're still able to wear vintage, which I think that concept is, yeah, that's really cool. Like I said in the beginning, this idea of kind of repurposing secondhand items specifically by fast fashion companies isn't anything new. Urban Outfitters has been doing it with their like vintage repurpose line thing and I believe also Boohoo has their own ethical sustainable line. I think the biggest question is if these items are from sustainable fabric and you know they're repurposed, if you are buying it, technically that money is still going to the fast fashion company, but if enough people are buying it, is it showing then the company that that is something that you value and you want them to kind of expand on that? Obviously the, probably the most obvious answer would be, well, no, you just shouldn't shop there anyway. But I don't think it's necessarily the most realistic. In a perfect world, we would all buy secondhand fashion. Everything would be sustainably made. No clothing would be in landfills, but that's just not realistic. If every bit counts, should we be happy and kind of praising the company for at least trying? No fast fashion company can be sustainable. And a lot of people want to do more for the environment. And although they may buy fast fashion, maybe they don't buy as much fast fashion. Would it then be beneficial for them to be able to go to Nasty Gal Vintage and buy from that? Or should they just say screw it and then just buy something from fast fashion? Many questions that I do not have answers for. I think it's all a personal choice and whatever you feel comfortable with or what you're able to do, again, counts. And we all are just trying our best. Like I said, I did purchase items from the Nasty Gal Vintage line, not to encourage or influence you to do that as well. And I just kind of wanted to see what the quality is actually like. What are the sizes? I got a couple bottoms. So is a medium actually a medium? So. I got it here. I think I spent like $150 on everything. I forgot how many items I actually ended up getting. I'm pretty sure I got mostly just denim because obviously. I do have to say because this is supposed to be a vintage line and be kind of talking about the idea of sustainability, I would recommend that the items not come in plastic. Just a little note, but open mind. Yeah, I definitely did buy all denim. So let's see. The first thing I got was the Nasty Gal Vintage Raw Deal Denim Shorts. And it just looked like they have a Levi's label on there, which I was very curious because the photos online kind of showed this tag. And I was like, is it going to be Levi shorts? I don't know. These were $33.79. Now, Nasty Gal is always on sale, so I'm pretty sure this was like 10% off or something like that. I mean, these are basically the actual prices because it's always on sale, but they look like true Levi's. They have, you know, the buttons on there. They definitely look like 501s. They are a size 34, which I'm usually like a size 30 in Levi's. And there were only three sizes that I could choose from, small, medium, large. I just got a medium, but I think they definitely will be a little bit too big. I mean, I can put a belt on there. That is something that is nice in the fact that I can exchange them and try a small, but they will be different. So those also may not fit. At least I have that option. And yeah, they just look like this. I feel like they may have cut it or something and like resize it. I mean, obviously they put their own tag in there that says nasty gal but this is kind of the inside i don't know looks like they folded it and then like sewed it i mean a lot better than 
I have done before. I'm going to insert the try on portion, actually talking about what I think about it because I haven't tried it on yet. So I don't really have an opinion of it. Sizing of this one isn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I mean, it's definitely like loose in the back. I am like almost 100% sure they resized these because th there's no way that this is a size 34. I mean, it still is definitely loose. They actually aren't bad. I mean, I don't like love them in the way that they like create a V in like the crotch area. That's pretty like typical of like Levi 501 shorts or jeans. Um, but they aren't terrible. I thought they were gonna be a lot bigger and like not being able to wear with a belt, but yeah, I just don't like love the fit of it, which is just personal preference. I then got the paper bag waist denim mini skirt blue, also in medium. This one was $27.02 and it is supposedly made out of a bunch of different colored denim and it just looks like this. In the photo, it does look like it had multiple different shades of denim, whereas this one just has two different shades of denim, which again, it is their vintage line, so every item is going to be unique and different, but just looks like they took two pairs of jeans and then sewed it together. So it does look like it's fabric that has been repurposed. Even the actual belt loops are a different color than the denim, and it's a paper bag style. I think because it has elastic in there, it's probably gonna fit pretty well, but we will see about that. I think the concept is really cool, like I said. I just like, I don't think paper bag style things look great on me, but it is inspiring me to maybe possibly try to like thrift flip this because I don't think it would be that hard. Like what, like look at, look at that. What is that? Is, be, is that because I don't have a bonnet? I just don't know. I just think it fits me really weird. Definitely fits like a true medium. I don't know if maybe they size each elastic exactly the same. I just, I don't love it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I do think it's, you know, two different color denims that have been stitched up together, but yeah. I got the Nasty Gal Vintage Bare Moment Off the Shoulder Denim Top, also in a medium for $15.44. And I do have to say, it seems like it's their denim, like their own fabric that then they just like repurpose, which maybe it was excess denim fabric from when they were making jeans. I'm not sure, but it does remind me of Nasty Gal shirt, but just looks like this little crop top. It's got kind of like a bustier. And then again, it has an elastic in there and it does have one different colored button in there. Interesting thing I didn't realize with this shirt is it actually has a label right where this third button is. And then it has those brown buttons inside. Seems like it actually was maybe like a, secondhand shirt. Um, I don't think looks good on me at all. Um, the actual like bustier, again, not enough loops to fill it out so you can't really see it. Obviously it's a little wrinkly because I just took it out, but it does inspire me to make this on my own. Like maybe take one of my button up denim jackets that I've thrifted and like thrift flip it. So that's one cool thing. I mean, I think it could be cute. I just don't think it's like cute on me. Also, because there's not like enough to fill the like bustier style bra part out, it's kind of making them pointy and weird. <laughs> I really wanted the light blue one, but they didn't have it in my size. So I ended up just getting this black denim, Nasty Gal Vintage Here to Fray denim bra top. It was $24.14 and I got it in a medium. Oh, okay, okay. I was so confused. I thought the back was the front. I think the medium will be okay. It seems like a good structured denim. This kind of seems like it was some black jeans that then they took and redid possibly. I definitely think I could have done a small because it is quite loose. I don't have too much of a boob. <laughs> boobs to fill it out. So it is quite like loose in the back. If it was at a thrift store, I probably definitely would buy it just because I'm a sucker for that. Um, it's just the sizing that I'm not like in love with. I don't know if maybe the small would be smaller or if it actually would end up being the same size. That's the only thing is like the sizes are going to be like weird. It doesn't seem like it would fall down like 
like it's not falling down so that's great i then got these after party vintage tempered gray high-waisted jeans they were 19 dollars 31 cents now they did not have a small or medium they only had a large and i was just really interested in trying out their jeans to see like what would a like size large to them be it does have you know its own label thing right there it doesn't say what i can't really oh is it it's called tripper that is the denim company tripper don't really look like a size large their size is 31 oh my god their length is 36. <sighs> the interesting part is it is a size 31 and the shorts that i got were a size 34 so even though a lot of kind of sizes vary depending on what company i'm really interested to see what the sizing is like between like the medium and then this the large but it looks like a pretty good pair of denim all right so these are the jeans they definitely cut off the bottoms because if these were supposed to be a length of 36 they would be way longer so they definitely cropped it i actually really love the fit if this is a size large i mean i can't even imagine what the size small and medium would be considered i would definitely still need to put like a belt just because they are a tad loose but the fit of it is really nice they're really a relaxed jean the only thing that's like very upsetting is the zipper is broken and i am so upset because it honestly would have been perfect let me show you unzipped still unzipped if you are buying it from a company that has kind of already diy the jean you would want the zipper to be working i don't know i'm just really like upset about it because i was really excited about these and then i did have to try one of their denim jackets i it just had to happen and i did get a different color than what i usually get because it was the only one they had this is the nasty gal vintage stitch it to me oversized denim jacket it was 38 dollars 61 it's a medium slash large okay this is oh there's like a red brown hair in the denim jacket that hair is way too healthy to be mine but okay so it does have the original stitching of what the denim jacket is so it does seem like it is a secondhand piece oh it's by a company called service worldwide but i mean it's a pretty good size it definitely seems like a large and definitely seems oversized the armholes are quite small i could always roll them up i just feel like this is so small it is an interesting color oh my gosh okay wait is this not a pocket there's like a hole in the pocket so definitely can't use the right pocket i think the length is like a large but the fit is more of a medium i don't think this is the most like amazing denim jacket i've ever seen in my life um yeah I feel like I've been talking for such a long time, so hopefully you are still here. I just had a lot of information I did want to share, and I didn't want to kind of just do a haul because it is still kind of fast fashion, and I wanted to give some context and also disclaimers. I was really scared that maybe it was like, I'm a hypocrite because I bought from a fast fashion company, but it's more that I just wanted to see what their vintage line was like. Is it actually secondhand? I don't think I'll personally buy from Nasty Gal again, just because I don't like the quality of their clothes. Although I think the items I did get are a pretty good quality. I just don't like the company in general and their stores are way less expensive. So I would love to know your opinion, whether that's positive or negative. Don't yell at me. I was just testing it out i think this idea of sustainable fast fashion is going to become a lot more popular and prevalent on fast fashion companies and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing up to you if you guys like thrifting videos thrift hauls thrifting with me's make sure you hit subscribe right down below and hit that little bell to be notified every time i make a new video and don't forget follow me on instagram and twitter alex and shine 83 to keep up to date with me during the week and i will see you guys on sunday with a brand new video enjoy life be happy and i love you lots bye